Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Diamond Billiard Products and Accustats Video Productions, it's my pleasure to welcome you once again to the 2015 Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. We're coming to you live here in the Accustats Arena at the Horseshoe Southern Indiana, the home of the Derby City Classic for the last seven years. And I know you've been with us all week and probably have heard this before, but we're gonna say it one more time, just in case we got some people joining us for the first time. The Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge is a special 16 player event, and each player has put up $1,000 for their entry fee. In addition to that $16,000, we wanna thank Diamond Billiard Products and Tournament Director Jay Helfert for contributing an additional $16,000 bringing our total prize fund to $32,000 among these 16 great champions. However, only four of them are gonna see money. And those are the four players that will play tomorrow. We've already got three of them. We're gonna pick the final one right after this match. The winner of this match is guaranteed minimum $4,000. We're playing a race to 11 games. The format is rack your own with winner breaks and a 40 second shot clock. If the 10 ball is pocketed on the break, it does not count as a win. It spots immediately and the breaker will continue to shoot. And unlike other 10 ball tournaments, this particular event, there is no call ball and pocket rule. As long as the lowest numbered ball is struck first legally, anything else that goes in does count. And we're playing all ball fouls. Okay, at this time, it's my honor to introduce our two competitors. Our first player comes to us from Davao City in the Republic of the Philippines, and he's been here many, many times before. He's a two-time Philippine national champion. He's a former World Cup of Pool champion, and he's the 2010 US Open 10-ball champion. He's sponsored by Davini Cues and Volturi Cases. Please welcome the slayer, it's Lee Van Corteza. Thank you, everybody. And his opponent from Helsinki, Finland, now residing in New York City. This gentleman is a former Ultimate 10 Ball Champion. He's a two-time Billiards Digest Player of the Year. He was also voted by Billiards Digest to be the Player of the Decade for the 2000s. His picture hangs high here at Derby City, representing his Derby City 9 Ball crown. And he's also a former World 9 Ball Champion. In 2014, he received our sport's highest honor by being elected to the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame. He's sponsored by Moose Billiard Shoes, Town Break and Jump Tips, Mez Cues, and Kamui. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer, the Iceman, Mika Imminent. All right, gentlemen, go ahead and lag for the break if you would. And at this time, I'm going to send it up to the booth to Mark Wilson and his partner, Bill Hendrickson. Take it away, guys. Hello and welcome, pool fans. Tonight we have quarterfinal action in the Bigfoot 10-ball tournament. My name is Mark Wilson, and tonight we have special guest and pool expert Bill Hendrickson providing the commentary. Bill, what should we be looking for in this one? Well, <laughs> what should we be looking for? I guess we have to be looking for uh, some expert play here, I and mean, it's a 5 by 10 table. Tight pockets. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's playing real, real, uh, fairly tough. Just in the warm-up. Uh, Mika looked very sharp, I noticed. Yeah, he's going to be sharp. They, they just introduced him as player of the, of the decade, and uh, that's saying something. Just inducted into the Billiards Hall of Fame. Lee Van played a good set yesterday. Lee perhaps, Van. Uh, um, go ahead. I was just going to say, perhaps he's, uh, Lee Van is a bit more uh, stoic in his emotions, and, uh, you know, Mika, he displays his emotions on his sleeve. You'll always know what he's thinking. He's won the lag and set the break here. Rack number one. This match is worth $4,000 to the winner. Quite a few dry breaks today as well, I might add. Yeah, you know, you know 10 ball is, is uh, less likely to make a ball out of break at 10 ball anyway, as far as I can ever tell. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially, I think, on a 5x10, it might even be more so. One ball over the far corner pocket. Hard time getting the cue ball back down table next to where it's... Well, he really needs the cue ball where it's at right now to have a great shot on the two. 
Yeah, this is going to be a hard shot. He's going to really have to do something with the cue ball. I, I don't think he's going to come straight back. He's going to probably have to try and move this ball around the table a couple of rails. No, he's coming straight back. I was wrong. Is it inappropriate for me to applaud here in the booth? That was a tremendous shot. That was a, a <laughs> wonderful shot. And unfortunately, he got himself almost straight. I don't know how he's going to... Depending on how this table plays, he, he's stuck there. Well, the pockets are snug. He's yeah. a long way from the pocket, so trying to cheat or manipulate yeah. the pocket's not great. If he could use that six ball to kind of create, help create the angle to get down table. Yeah. I don't think I, he I can even do that. Much. He's going to cinch that ball, I think, and just hug that rail. Good decision here. These guys try to economize on the unforced errors. Yeah, it's a shame. He made such a wonderful shot. He, that, that was really luck, you know. Yep. What he needed was a quarter of an inch either way. He would have been all right. It's great to be hitting the ball that pure that you uh, overdraw it from that distance. Sure. He's got to be a shot maker now. You cut this ball on the side, and that's a hard shot. You know, you can't really fault him for that. I mean, he was shooting from flat on the rail. That's early in the game also. Mm -hmm. He needs to warm up. Everybody needs to get a little loose. The first rack. It's like a little bit of stage fright for some players. This is really the only tournament of the year that we use a 5x10, so there's some players that are just completely unfamiliar with it. A lot of great, talented players. $1,000 entry fee. You know they're serious about it. Yeah. The Pat's running this... Uh, um. Oh, boy, that got ugly. Make it happen event. And uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember if that was on a 5 by 10 or not. Are they on 5 by 10s he, he didn't know he did one of them, I think, on a 5 by 10 The rest of them have been nine-footers. He just jacked up, makes a good shot, but could not get all the way down table. Fairly interesting. We're playing all ball fouls, which I, I really approve of. And so that certainly is uh, of concern when you're jacked up over a ball now. You have to be a bit more mindful. Yeah, I thought he was going to play safe there. I wasn't certain. I certainly wouldn't have gone that way. That's a nice shot. Lee Van now is faced with a somewhat difficult rail first kick on the six ball, but the seven ball's hanging over the side pocket, so there is a little bit of a reward attached should he be able to make this. I don't know if he can go between the... Yeah, he's going to try and go between the ball and the rail and try to catch the outside of the ball. That should put the... Uh, no, he didn't do what I thought. I mean, he went the way I thought, but he, I would have tried to catch the ball very thin. And, and have it drop on the bottom rail and, and get the cue ball up to the top, you know. Spoken like a true one-pocket player That's a one-pocket right shot. That's why I said it, yeah. <laughs> but well done. And that might have, in fact, been the more prudent choice. Well, yeah, he gave, a, he gave a shot up, and it looks like he might have given the rack up. Yeah, second good opportunity for Mika as he comes to the table and establishes himself. Looks like a snake shot here. He'll go to the end rail with inside spin. And didn't necessarily want to be quite that straight. Yeah. It'll be okay, though. Pull it back a little bit. Oh, come off the rail. Well, that was confidently struck. 40-second shot clock. Neither player seems inclined to drag it out. These two players are quick shooters. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue <laughs> with them unless they have a, a situation. That, that, that's always the commentator's friend when we have two fast players here. <laughs> when we get two lint pickers. <laughs> he didn't get the perfect angle. I don't know. He's going to have to. Uh, wow. He, he got there perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he won't have a problem now, but he was, he was very close to having a serious. Yeah, well said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, he staggered it. Oh, I thought he table missed it. It was not as tough as we thought. I thought he missed that ball. Did you not? But it, it gave him a little grace for the first. That was for first rack uh, Generous. Grace gave him. Yeah, okay. Nevertheless, Mika Eminen takes the early lead, one to nothing. Yeah, he, he was so close to the ball that he didn't quite cut it enough. You know, it was, when you're close to the ball, it's a little harder to... Great point there, so Bill. Should, yeah, when you're close, you have to cut him a little more. I don't know if there's a little more cling or if it's a visual perception thing. Both, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe both. Maybe yeah. both. But, uh, very, very interesting. All right, him and then breaking from the left side rail, leading one to nothing. See what he can do on the break here. 
Well, he throws much harder than the last rack. He hit it more solid, too, but he didn't get any uh, result much better than the, the one before. Uh, I think something jumped in the air, didn't it? The, the cue ball, ball maybe? No, no, the cue ball was definitely bouncing. He yeah. kind of overamped a little bit. He's, seems like he's wound up pretty tight. He made, what, the one ball? Yes. Do you have any experience on the 5 by 10 Very little. Very, Very little. little. I, I have some, yeah. Uh, not in tournaments or anything like that. Was, we used to do a little travel, and sometimes I would bump into one. It's pretty, pretty, pretty stern test, and, you know, some people say, oh, straight ball on 5 by 10 is easier. Well, I have one in my house, and I'm here to tell you, it is not easier. Look at that nice shot. Oh, he got a bad break again. Look at this. Confident ball pocketing. I think he's hooked. I don't think he can hit this ball. What's your high run in a straight pull? I think it was like 16 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to play I'm, so no matter what. Gonna, okay. I'm not going to tell you. Which, uh, I guarantee you it's triple I, digits. If I tell you what it is, uh, all, all yeah, you, it's triple digits. All you New York guys or New Jersey guys. You know, it's, it, it is triple digits. But I hear a lot of guys saying these big numbers. I don't want to. All right. Oh, he hit the ball. A nice he's playing, try. It looks like he was playing the 10. He definitely was. That was a nice try. I didn't have enough time to see that happen. He just got up and did it. <laughs> yeah, Mickey's mean, playing very, very fast. I've called a lot of his matches. He's playing a little bit he faster. Got he got lucky again. Look at this now. He's, he, the 10 got in the way. Yeah. Lee Van would like to kick the bottom half of the three. He could possibly get a little action on the 10 ball here. Maybe get some separation. He might, get, he might make the 10 ball if he hits it correctly. Yeah. He gets lucky. He's playing the three in the side and the ten in the corner here, and maybe a backdoor safety with it. Well, nope. Hit the top of the ball. Yep. I don't believe he tried to do that. I think he was trying to do what you said. Yeah, yeah, it's a, still a hard kick. We're talking about hitting the proper side of a ball from sure. long ways away. Cloth's a little bit slippery, skidded a little well, bit he, long. He could hit this ball, and he's looking He's looking for a billiard, but I don't think that ball's... Uh, high enough for him to get enough of that ball to make the 10 on a billiard. He can hit the 10 solid enough, but he'll never he'll never be able to hit the top of the 10. Well, I guess he that had the about, bank. That was about yeah. the best he could do, I think. I think he had the bank in mind as his primary objective, and the secondary objective would be if he accidentally right. mishit right. the bank, maybe that right. goes. And the tertiary objective may have been a safe, too. Mm -hmm. But who knows? You're the only pool player I ever heard to use the word tertiary, but nonetheless. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like never it. Heard secondary before. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to cross side with this ball. Very, very nice. <laughs> Wasting no time. He's acting like this is a bar table. I mean, yeah, yeah. He's just like he's supposed to make everything. Firing away. He's banked two balls in this rack so far. Neither one was on bank. Well, that was an interesting way to play that shot. I like it. He's just going to come to the rail and bounce off a little bit, maybe, or maybe not even reach the rail. Yeah. He might do the same thing, but just pull it up towards the side pocket on the shot. I mean, he could go either way. He could go down to around two or three rails, or he could come straight back and across. Uh, I'm not sure what he, he's going to favor. I Looks think, like he's coming back. Yeah, because, you know, that's the shot that you play a little bit more off, and yeah, then you do the yeah. inside spin around from that yeah. distance. Now you can just top spin. I must say, at this year's Hall of Fame induction ceremony, uh, Mika was very overwhelmed with the honor. He gave a great speech. I was very impressed. He hit that sweet, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, he's hit everything very, very crisp. He's really looking sharp. Very nice. Yep. Very nicely done. Captures game number two, and the score now is imminent two. Cortez is zero. Who's that down there? Uh, that would be our esteemed colleague and Jay. promoter, Jay Helfer. I like the way they're wiping the balls off. I, I was I watched the billiard match uh, recently, and they really take care of the cue balls. Uh, yeah. There's only three of them, but still. And they make sure there's really no oil or dirt on them. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've ever had a ball skid on you, you'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll appreciate that. Sometimes a ball will uh, contact the dirty spot. Right. And when you hit it to cut it in the pocket, it'll grab and it won't go where you hit it. It's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Well, you look like he changed his break and aim a little bit on that one. He went down lower. I don't know if he tried it or not. Yeah, very seldom do they want the cue ball to go down yeah, lower because yeah. the one ball tends to go to the other end of the table. But if you're using the cut break, it does go there sometimes. If you're trying to purposefully play the one on the side, you'll get that effect. I think he's going to probably try and fan this ball play safe, but I'm not sure. This requires a great shot. Yeah. It's a little heavy. Well, be able he to might try get to the use two the ball for Oh, yeah. no. We'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah, I got him. I think he's, I think he's hooked. Uh, I think he can see it. See? I, I'm kind of feeling it. I, and partly based on Lee Van you know, he, he gave a glimpse, like even though it's a hard yeah, shot, yeah, I left he, him he a shot. See he's going to draw straight back here. Oh, boy, what a nice shot. Can we get a little round of applause here, folks? Yeah, that was <laughs> oh, gone. And, uh, three ball, does that even go down a rail? I don't think I don't so. Believe so. I don't think so. Might come back for a bank. Oh, he missed the ball. Yeah. You know what was interesting about that shot? He hit that because he knew he was shooting to something that wasn't great, and he kind of had a split mind about. It. He wasn't really committed to that shot right, like he was the right. ball before. I do that all the time. You know, if I, if I uh, sometimes you have your, your intentions divided. Yeah, I, I describe it like this: Do not shoot with ambiguity. Make your mind up and commit to it, even if it's the right. wrong decision. It's remarkable how good you do when you're committed. Sure. He's going to go on this side. He's going to probably come come uh, back for the bank again. I don't think he's going to come at the balls. Mm, he certainly didn't mean to collide no, into that ball. He got himself in trouble. Now. He got, now he's in what? trouble. He got himself in trouble here. I don't know how he's going to. He's going to go rail first and try and kick that three on the other side of the nine or ten maybe. But Good oh, shot. No, that was, Good that was shot. A, oh, made the ten ball. Game winning shot. Very good. It, that's not entirely luck because he played the shot properly to leave it tough, and you can see where the uh, three ball was. Yeah, I, I didn't see the shot that played that way. I but was, now you I see was, the beauty of yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of okay. Course. So uh, Lee Van Corteza now has one on the scoreboard, trails in the match two games to one. You know, of course, chance favors the bold, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's what he went for. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't expect to get the 10, but he knew he was yeah. going to lock that three up, and that. That's what the beauty of that shot was. Yeah. The Filipinos have absolutely mastered that aspect of the sport. The that wonderful kicking players. Game. The yeah. wonderful players. Universally. Speaking of which, I see Warren yeah, Camco looking on. I'm going to see what Lee Van Cortesa is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, how he hits the ball. Very accurate. He went a little forwards with the cue ball, but he hit him very solid. I yes, he did. I don't think he made one. No, he didn't. And he left about nine feet of uh, green between the one ball and the cue ball. And it's not near a pocket. So he's going to go for a safe of some sort, probably. Might try to bank the one ball down uh, near the top left hand. I don't know if he's blocked on that. I think he might try to bank this right to here. But I don't think he can get to that side. Well, these two balls will block, you know? Well, I know I'm saying this ball here is a... You don't think you can hit the, that ball? I, well, maybe you can. Yeah. Now, on the other camera view, it looks yeah. like he yeah, can. Maybe, so. maybe get the cue ball. Oh, he oh, went the going. other way. He went the other <laughs> way. Well, I was, it was a bank. It just was the wrong way. Okay. Well, well done. We're talking about it. He's got it in the pocket already. So. Yeah, right. I know that was a good shot. I'll tell you... Mika is very, very impressive in this match so far. Wow, that's a nice cut. Wow. Yet another good shot. That's the third bank he's made in this match. And go on rail, straight down for the five in the, uh, the caddy corner. He will travel on fast.
You just go to the side cushion and bounce out near the center of the table, yeah, preserving these, these that good kinda, angle. These are kind of basic, basic uh, pattern shots. Side reel, side reel, get on top of the seven here. You can do it both thing. ways. You could go that way or you could go around the bottom. I think it would go zigzag. Yeah, like that. Better slow down. He could have gone the other way also with that. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, two way shots in pool, especially nine mole. Just hold this, you think? Oh, he hit it a little rough. He meant to hold it, but he yeah. overcut the ball. So uh, he's all right though. He's almost straight in the other straight corner. Straight in the corner, yeah. yeah. Mika has a great cueing action, a very com uh, compact swing. Not many moving parts. That contributes to consistency. He reclaims a two-game lead at three games to one. Now let's see if he's learning how to break the balls. This is the time where he should really start to, to gear in on that break shot. I like when they rack their own. Okay. Maybe, maybe we can get another look at that bank shot that Mika played to start that rack off. Look at this shot. Go shot. Played it with a pace that's going to clear the corner and bring the cue ball all the way down. Should he miss, should he fail, that's a good chance that one's exiting the area. I mean, there was a quite a number of great shots in that rack. Oh, yeah. He's being very particular about how he racks these balls. Uh, and I don't blame him. I mean, you, if you get a, sh a shot after the break, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at, at their speed of play, they're going to make, they're going to get the whole rack. Well, he ramped up the power that time. I don't think he caught it quite solid as he would have liked to. See what happens here. He has yeah, a shot another, on a yeah. three, six, nine, ten. He didn't make anything. Uh, right. He's got the two, one, two right there. He'll probably just kill the cue ball. Got the one in and kill the cue ball for the two. He's going to be have to be able to reach that ball, caddy corner. Uh, um, Thought he wanted to kind of clip that four ball that time. I think yeah, kind of absolutely. Able. He was trying to do that. You're right. And it and wasn't an easy it, shot. No, to it do, wasn't. But, uh, it wasn't. That's anyway. why. That's why I was thinking about killing the ball. But if you killed it, your level would be too uh, stretching, and you maybe need the bridge or something. I don't even know if he can hit this ball. He might have to come from behind. Well, looks like you are correct. I think he'll go. No, he went a little harder than I thought he would. I thought he would go soft speed there. I don't believe he has a bank shot, does he? No. Mm -mm. No. I don't think you want to leave Mika any bank shots right now. Oh, he did have one. He did have one. He's four for four on bank shots on the five by ten here. Oh, well, he's going to be safe. Can he hit the edge of that ball? Well... Very, very difficult to tell from our vantage point. I think he clip it. He's, he wasn't sure himself. He was looking down. He bent down, and he wasn't sure himself. Certainly, uh, it doesn't look likely to be made. That side pocket's the five is blocking the mm -hmm. side, so. Yeah, he'd be cutting this at maybe a third of a pocket. It just sounds like if he really could hit it thin enough, he might get a, a, a safe out of it. The ball ends up behind the five. Oh, oh, it fit. Boy, this. What an accurate hit that was. That was. Long be with bad luck. Okay. Whew. He almost scratched it aside. Certainly didn't deserve it. No. But we know that can happen. That's a part of the sport here. 
This ball fits right past the nine ball, I think. Yeah, it does. Oh. He Powered up, it. but I'm not sure where he was going. Yeah, he's going to cut this ball on the side, so he... Well, you think? This well, is pretty it's possible. Far you know, that's all. It's possible. Well, if he cuts it in the side, he's going to possibly scratch in the corner is what I'm fearful of. That's I think if he cuts it in the side, if he makes it, he doesn't scratch. If he misses it, he scratches. But it's a very fine degree of difference. No, you're right. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's playing well. He didn't get. The, he's not getting the best of these roles. Every time it's a, it's like a... <laughs> Right, no, it's, it's a real we it's a fraction over here, like pulling teeth. Yeah, everything's tricky. He's looking at a, a bank of some sort. What's he looking at? A bank or a billiard? I think billiard a little bit of 10? both. Like he's, a bank with a billiard on a ten. Yeah, and I think it's primarily because he doesn't have a lot of choices here. He's got to yeah. hit that ball. He's going to try and leave the cue ball long. He's going to, oh no, it was a two way shot. You might get lucky here again. Look at this. He's going to need the bridge for the shot. I'm almost sure. <laughs> yeah, Will Chamberlain needs the bridge for this shot. <laughs> Unless you kick at it from the side rail. I have a friend uh, where I live. Uh, his name is Jerry. He is a, a pretty tall guy. He's about six, at least six five, I guess. And, uh -huh. he, and he doesn't weigh a lot. He's just, he can get both legs. I, he can almost straddle the pool table. Oh, really? It's amazing. He's the only person I would I know wouldn't need a bridge for that shot. I'm sure there's somebody else, like you said, Will Chamberlain or somebody like that, maybe. Yeah. I used to play pool with a football player from the University of Wisconsin. He was a big lineman. I don't know how big he was, but he was the only guy I ever saw that could on a nine-foot table, when I'd win the rack, he'd reach from one side into the other side pocket, fish the balls out, flat-footed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a big dude there. Sure is. I've never seen anyone else do it. I'm sure they can, but can I was amazed. This, can he cut this ball up the corner here? It looks like he's having a problem with that, too. Yeah, it does. It looks Everything's like he's just... a fraction, like a yeah. small rack's been that way. I think this, he can hit it. It's really remarkable how many times the balls do get tied up in such a way that you could hit it, but they really can't. Yeah, have I think a he's got the cross corner bank is what he's got. He's looking at that, I think. I don't know that you can roll by it, pass in front of it to make that bank. I think you have to pinch it with velocity. Well, he's yeah. kicking, kicking. Okay. He didn't get the best of this either. You could have gotten a safe out of that. I think that's what he's trying for. Mm hmm. These lob will go real first on a shot. Bring the cue all up for the. Yeah, he did. Well, he got awful close. Couldn't have got worse. But again, <laughs> he's got a problem here. I don't couldn't know if he needs a bridge on this one. Yeah. He's got to put a stroke on the ball to come around. And uh, I don't know if he can do that with the bridge so easily. He's going to use no bridge. Got to be mindful being of careful his shirt. Not to, yeah, yeah, he's being careful not to hit the nine ball with his shirt. And here comes the bridge. I thought that might have to be used. He's going to bring the cue ball around four cushions underneath the eight with this shot as well, rather really? than trying to be. I, I thought he was going to do a softly go three cushions, but maybe I'm wrong. No, well, you're right. But he missed the ball. Extension taken. This is a hard shot, no matter which pocket you go for. Well, just slightly overcut it. I call that missing it to the pro side. Unless yeah. it's hanging. They've missed a couple of shots in a row now. Yeah. And I think this would be the last one they miss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this rack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mika's game is built on straight shooting. He possesses super firepower. This was a great shot. The way he played position on that was nice. 
deceptively. Uh, it looks easy when you do it right. Sure. Not easy to do. You well know. I'll just hit this one and pretty much just, well, you won't touch a reel with the cue ball on this one. I'll just slide over. And he wins the break. Yeah, Lee Van scores his second win. Trails in the match two games to three. Might mention again, we have special guest, pool expert, Bill Hendrickson with us. Hey, Bill, how many balabushkas have you had in your life? Balabushkas? Yep. Oh, I had a couple. <laughs> I just passed on buying one, uh, I don't know, it was eight months ago. And I didn't, I didn't buy it because I thought the uh, shafts were a little off, a little warped. Uh-huh. And the person right next to me bought it for the same amount as I would have paid, and he tripled his money. <laughs> oh, yeah? I was sick. I was sick. Yeah, well, you, you almost can't miss on those no matter what you give. Yeah. Because they're not making any more of them. Yeah, I made a mistake. Do, do you know for a fact it's authentic? Yeah, we had it authenticated. My friend had it authenticated. And we knew where it was from. Uh, that is the issue. Well, Lee Van scratches on the break here. That's not the way to start off the rack. I used to have a lot of Zambodis. Uh-huh, I bet. You're in the right area of the country yeah. for those kind of cues. Uh, whenever I had a, a tip put on or shaped, I used to bring it to Gus. I knew him from Philly. And uh, if he had something for sale, uh, sometimes he would let me have it for a little more. You know, it was de designated to go to an unknown person. And sometimes I'd offer him another 50 bucks and or 100 and he would take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, good stories. Well, I mean, you know, supposedly, you know, I don't know if that, that was the deal, or, you know. No, I mean, it's great to hear someone that's actually had interaction with some of these legendary Q builders. You're in the right area of the country. I was not. Three, you're going to slide it right up for the four. Whistled right past the five without bumping it. That was good. He didn't get the quite the right angle that he wanted to. Thinking about yeah, stunning yeah. the cross and back through, that yeah, takes a good yeah, hit. He's gonna have to. He's gonna just try and hold it there, I think, or or come. He's gonna need need to keep that. Yeah. So he's trying to come straight on the ball would have been easier, but he he presented a problem for himself by doing that. He got away with it. The eight ball was gonna come into play and could have caused it trouble. Now he can just. Pretty much stick on the ball. He'll be fine. Yeah, all that's behind him now. He's negotiated that treacherous type of a layout. Well, I think we're going to see a draw shot. Play it in the seven in the far corner. Oh, he bumped the seven. Uh, he certainly didn't mean to do that. Yeah, but he's got a nice shot up the corner. Yeah. He's able to pull this to the side. He could, he could do it either way. He could pull it to the side, and, or he could just follow down. And I think he's going to pull it to the side. He got a little, he got a little funny again. <laughs> uh, he shakes his head. He looks up at the uh, TV light. He's going to follow us, or, or well, he's going to slam it. He's going to slam it. Oh, he drew it. Oh my gosh. Very confident. He put a great draw on that ball. Yeah, very confident ball striker. He drew the ball about eight feet, four feet down, four feet up. Every bit of that. Mm-hmm. Nika Eminen collects the ten ball. Regains a two-game lead at four to two. Playing pretty confident. Pretty yeah. Confidently. I bet you had a lot of matches in straight pool against Pat Fleming. We used to play straight pull. He used to spot me a little bit, if I recall. We used to play in his room, on his fr front table. Uh -huh. He was good there. He used to really play well. Oh, I know. But uh, we used to play. Uh, I never know. We played a, a, a ring game. We played all night long one time in Passaic, New Jersey, where he had one of his rooms. 
Those were the days. Sure. Okay, Mika Eminen. Really hasn't got much offense from the break so far. There's the one ball on the side. Two balls going to check up pretty nice, too. Well, the three, if that's going to fit by, I think the three's going to fit by the, uh, what's that, the six, seven? Six. Six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, he's kind of, uh, are laying nice to run. The four or five. Six, seven. Boy, this is, this is, this is, the next ball is almost the whole rack. Uh oh The chat. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, this is like a, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't get out this rack. He will too. I mean, everything's just mechanical. It's automatic. Back there, laying so good. This is where maybe you should make sure that you slow yourself down a little bit. Just don't hurry it up. Get out of line. No reason yeah, to get absolutely. out of line here. Just absolutely. You don't have to belabor any shot, but on the other hand, you don't have to hurry any shot. He just went a little too far on that one, too. Just a little. I think we're going to see a three-cushion position. Absolutely. He's going to drag it up and around because be, he'll be heading right towards the eight ball. I think he let it go a little hard, did he? Yeah. He's got a lot of travel here. Oh, boy. I think he's okay. He's okay. He almost had the nine in a way, but he's fine. Yeah, he, just what you said, you know, he should have slowed himself down a little bit and he wouldn't have had the little bit of trouble that he did manufacture for himself. Well... Ten balls down. Well, he got out fine. Yeah, him and then created a little offense from the break. Uh, his first break and run out of the match. Sure he's happy to see that. A lot of people are uh, in this tournament. I was surprised to see how many people were in this tournament. Yeah, 375 in the bank pool. Is that what you're referencing? Yeah, I, I, yeah. No, I, I, think, I think the one, um, I, the one pocket might have gone over 500 or something. Oh, and really? I don't, I'm no. not certain, but I heard somebody saying that. Well, we get a remarkable that's, that's, turnout here. That's really remarkable. The, the least attended is the nine ball, surprisingly. Is that right? Always, yeah. And the bank pool is usually the most. I was telling my friend I thought it was uh, one pocket was you know picking up in the in the world you know oh, a lot well, of people were playing it more. I think definitely well anyway Mika, he didn't make one he missed he no. came up dry again five two is our score Lee Van not much of a shot here. But if he makes it, he, he might be on the 2 10 combo there. He might can try to fan this ball and go for the game right away. Oh, he played the billiard. Yeah, that was the idea to see that. He played the billiard with the safe. And a great decision, too, because he knocks that clear. So he had a chance to win the game on the early goings, but Mika should leave and have tried the one and failed. He might have got the 2 10s. Much approve of his discretion. He could kick this the side rail. He might fit right between the uh, the nine and yeah. He's going to try and hop the ball a little bit right between the nine and the. Uh, yeah. No, he didn't do it successfully. I, I wish I would have predicted. I was going to say I don't think he can jump it that far. Did he play with a jump cue or was that? A yes, no, you cue? can't use a jump cue in this tournament. He can use your break cue. It uh -huh. has to be your one of those two cues in full configuration.
No, it doesn't want to get. Yeah. It's fine. Good light nudge on the nine so he didn't get in front of it and jacked up. He's just going to draw his ball back a little bit. Oh, he really snatched it. Talking about a little bit. He put a great stroke on it, Paul. Mm hmm. A very unusual angle he drew that, too. Doesn't happen a lot, but he, but he hit it perfectly. Good chat there. Yeah, he doesn't want to get... This could be delicate. Yeah, he got dead straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got to play short side position. It'll be okay, though. Trickle forward about a diamond's length. I'm going to preserve some angle. Great shot. Another question for you, as long as you're here, Bill. Sure. Jersey Red. Jack Bray, Bray, Braykoff. Bray. Did you play him? I've No, I never played him. I've seen him uh, play in a room where I played often, and I was a little too young. Uh, he had me by maybe 10 or 15 years. And... Uh, the little bit I was around him, he was so big, gregarious, happy-go-lucky. He he made the pool room fun when oh, I was yeah. around him, you know. Yeah, Jack Bray, they used to call him, but then his, I found out later on his name was Braykoff or something like that. Right. And he was also a, a star baseball player, I was I understand. Uh-huh. Left-hander, if I remember right. Yeah. And uh, he uh, put on an exhibition in Passaic, New Jersey one time upstairs in a place called Central Billiards. He was playing a man named Nick Alberti, who was a strong uh, semi-pro. And I could remember uh, Jersey Red shooting a, a ball in that I didn't know was possible. You know, he, he cut a ball in so, th so thin that I, th I, th I, I, I this is the first time I've ever seen anybody, because I was still yeah. new to the game. Sure. It was the first time I've ever seen anybody cut a ball that fine. And uh, it sort of made me, he sort of made me like pool. Yeah. Made a lot of people like pool. Look on as Lee Van is handling this layout pretty nicely. Good control. He's out like a light here. He always did this. He, he, I don't know why he liked me, but he did. And he goes, Wilson, Wilson, come here. Let me show you this shot. Then Who said that? Jersey ran. Oh, really? You know? <laughs> yeah. Then he, that's, uh, I'd be always anything he said I would do. And, so I go watch, and he barely missed. He goes, ah, oh, caught me off guard, caught me off guard. <laughs> then he do it and make it the second time. Lee Van captures a game here. Nice, nice solid run out there, too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Orteza three, Eminem five. Yeah, Jersey Red was a, uh, an interesting guy to be around. Mm-hmm. So have, he was probably one of the last Damon Runyons. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say. Big, gregarious, happy at least, in, at least in the pool world, you know, one of the last Damon Runyons in the pool world. Him and UJ Puckett. Yeah, I didn't know Puckett. I, I saw who he was, but I never met him. But I did know yeah. Red from, no oh, multiple occasions. Like, I was very young at the time, naturally. But upcoming player. Somehow he took a liking to me. I always admired him. So anything he would say, I would do. Sure. Make a lead, five to three. He, uh... He took Jeremy Jones under his wing in his latter years. Right? Yeah, yeah. Then uh, taught Jeremy one pocket. Jeremy is a very pleasant young man to be around as well. Well, he certainly has played a lot of one pocket. Mm-hmm. The one pocket's a funny animal. Uh, you could teach people all you want, and uh, they they have to hit a lot of balls to get the feel for the game. This yeah. Looking on now is Lee Van Cortez is set to break. Game number nine. He might have made a... No. Three, six, nine, ten. No, I don't think he made anything. Unless they're playing 11 ball. <laughs> 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 and he's seeing if he can cut this one ball. And I know he can hit it, but he's not sure if he can cut it in the right corner. Maybe he's going to have to do something else. He cut in the right corner, he could come down around natural for the two. He's looking to see if it's possible. 
Here in the stands, I see Rocket Rodney Morris. I see the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Rodney Morris, he's from Hawaii, I think. He certainly is. Yeah, that was kind of Hawaiian Brian's star pupil. Yeah. That was not what he was trying to do, I'm sure. He's going to try and hold this ball, I think, now. Yeah, he flinched he might, at yeah, it, too. He tried to hold it, and he, he missed. Yeah, well, he, he just cheek, missed. Right? It, if he hits it, he, he cut it. So if he hits it square into the pocket, then he does hold it. Yeah, right, those. Right. But if, he, if we were to take another look at his body on that delivery, you'd see he definitely flinched. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. It'll yeah, work. I would, too. Very interesting, because it doesn't take much, and especially on the 10-foot table. If you're not feeling certain or confident at all, it will bring the flinch out of you. Yeah. Okay. Here yeah, we're going to get another look at the shot. Watch his head and body. Watch the shoulders on the delivery. It wasn't quite straight. And you can see the stick yeah, definitely over, slashed to the side. Sure. And, yeah. You overcut it. That's, you know, you say, well, Mark, there wasn't much motion on that, but there's such a thing as called muscle recruitment, meaning if you know you're going to move, the little muscles move minutely before you can visually see them move, and that's all it takes to miss a shot of that dimension. Now the tip's off the cue ball. The van, uh, he didn't pull the cue ball right on this shot. He, he didn't hit it the correct speed, and... Uh, Maybe partially missed the ball, although it went in the pocket and they left themselves safe. Yeah, he rubbed the object ball on the way by, so we know he hit it way heavier than he anticipated. And he had real bad luck. He scratched in the side. He made a good hit on the two, but he scratched in the side. These balls are laying real nice, too. There's not a, there's not a problem that I can see. No, right? I like to get pretty straight in, I think, on the four ball, or on the three ball to get to the four. The three to the four is nice. The four to the five is nice. Uh, the five to the... Six isn't a problem. I can't see any problems. I mean, you know, he has to hit his speeds correctly, but if he hits mm -hmm. his speeds correctly, he'll... Well, oh, he didn't hit that correctly. Well, sometimes with ball in hand, you get a tough angle, I guess. Well, I, it's always I, embarrassing. I, I didn't see it, but maybe, uh, you know. No, I'm kidding. It's always embarrassing when you start a ball in hand and you're out of line after the first shot. You know, it's like, what were you doing? Now he's worked himself back into a yeah. better alignment. Not an easy shot. As long as he doesn't miss this ball, he'll be fine. He'll come out and around for the next ball, uh, a little bit of right bottom. So now he's worked himself at, back into where he should have been to begin with. Sure. He's going to draw back a little bit and... He'll be fine. Stay away from that side. Oh. Yeah, he didn't like to see. He felt his cue ball. If he, come, if he came backwards, he felt his cue ball was going to be too close to the yeah. side pocket, I think. And so he decided to go the other route, and he hit it so hard and started to force he missed the ball. Great call there by a very experienced player. Talking about some of the psychological aspects of that miss. Particularly with a guy that's not missing any long-range shots, and all of a sudden now he's missed a mid-range shot. So you know he was a little bit split-minded, yeah. not committed. Here's I Lee Van. behind his back. Uh, last time I was able to do that was 1951. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are so limber and yeah, so yeah. nimble. He could follow us all the way down past the nine, or he could pop it off the reel. I, I think I would follow it down past the nine. Yeah, popping at this range on tight pockets no, not didn't. working out all that great. He didn't do either, and that's why he's on the near the rail. He got lucky that the pockets, you know, going to give him a little room to stroke it. I think he played for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mean you think he played played for the uh, pocket the pocket to be in yeah, the way? Yeah, just to, because well, it was so straight yeah. in, trying to yeah. pop it wasn't yeah. going to work great. And, Correct. Yeah, that's a good, good decision. And then 
supported by good execution. You overcut that. Wiggle the home. Yeah, wiggle the home. Nice angle now. He's just going to slide straight down now. Could have, if could have, you know, again, he would have had a two way shot there. He could have followed to the rail and bounced off, but I guess he likes certain ways to do things. Well, got the job done. And now yeah. he trails five to four. <laughs> Levan Cortez is going to rack his own balls and then break. Looks like he's playing with a non uh, middle jointed cue. I think most of the players have gotten the non middle jointed cues now. It's a, yep, yeah, we got a, the non metal thing as we look on. It's 812 to 730 on the total performance average. Is that right? Yeah. And that means what exactly? Well, you should know, but 850 is kind of the line of world class pool on a uh, 10 foot table. Right. And it has to do with the AccuStat batting average of pool mm -hmm. assessment. And it has to do with the amount of errors versus the amount of balls that you pocket. It's very educational for improving your game. And back to the point about uh, metal joint. Right. <laughs> about half the pros used to play with stainless steel and about half played with the non-metal. And there's never any conclusive evidence about one or the other. As you say, it seems like the majority of the pros today are now playing non-metal joints. Well, a lot of the, the the players back, you know, in the 80s, I'd say, were playing with a, a Muchi Q, and he, he promoted them better than anybody I've ever seen promote a Q. And uh, that might have some reason, you know, some bearing on the fact that everybody was using non-metal jointed cues or a lot mm -hmm. of people were using them the back then because he was probably the best promoter of yeah of cues uh, that way and he only made uh, one model of cue that I knew of uh, up until a certain point at least that was metal I know he made Alan Hopkins a metal jointed cue and tried to get Alan to play with it and uh, Alan tried and he couldn't get it uh, adapted to it so he went back from it but there was an Alan Hopkins model back then with a metal joint that's interesting. Yet you've been around Pooh for a long time. Lee Van opened up this inning with a combination bank. Now he's made a nice follow shot to get in line here. A little draw here on the two to get position for the four. I play a non-metal joint, but I'm tall, and when you add that metal up front, then you have to counterbalance my cue because it won't naturally balance, which adds weight. I like a light cue. So for me, I like the non-metal joint because... Uh, I've been, playing with, better. I've been playing with a Paul Motti for a number of years. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, in the beginning, he, he was only making, not only making, but mostly making only metal joint cues and, uh, with a 5, 16, 14 uh, joint. And I asked him to make me a 3, 8, 10 or something like that joint with a non-metal joint cue because I liked the way that the, those cues were hitting a little softer to me. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't really know what I wanted, but... Uh, I knew I didn't like what I was playing with. I didn't like the metal. Mm -hmm. now, this is a treacherous little dis distribution of the balls here, isn't it? Cause oh, yeah. If you bump the nine, you have a pretty thin cut on the seven. You're close. That's the only uh, grace out of that shot. But it's very difficult to do much more than just that. He didn't even have to touch the nine, I guess. So that was good. He saved him a couple inches anyway, yeah. Yep. I think he wants to miss the nine completely now. I'm not sure if it's possible. No. He got a nice shot out of it, though. He'll be fine. It appeared that he purposely tried to use the nine to slow the cue ball yeah, down absolutely. there. Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't realize he was trying to hit the bottom of it like that. Very, very accurate shooter. You know, they can do things. He'll be fine. He's going to follow this ball and come back to almost straight in on a 10.
Good shot. Falls very nicely. Yeah. I don't think I'll miss one of these in about six years. And despite Bill's best effort to shark <laughs> Lee Van, <laughs> he sank it anyway. <laughs> I was just thinking, that's just what's going to happen. But the score is now five games apiece. We're starting over. And uh, well, there's been a couple minor mistakes. It's been a pretty well-played match so far. Pretty interesting, pretty entertaining. Well, I, I don't know. If I was Mika, he had several opportunities to take a significant lead. And if I was Mika, I'd be getting a little worried right now. Yeah, Corteza got a little momentum, as we saw on Rack Track. He's yeah. won the last three Racks in a yeah. row. Mm, you know, possibly due to Mika's misfortune or possibly due to uh, his lack of performance. Mm-hmm. Lee Van's going to... Lee Van Corteza. Sounds like a, an interesting name, doesn't it? Lee Van Cleef kind of name. Yeah. Lee Van set the break here. Score is tied. Five games apiece. Boy, you hit him much squarer this time. Key ball did not go forward. But once again... Nothing dropped. Three ball rolls in there where it's... And he's really got a funny leave here. I mean... He's jacked over the two, and, and it's the cue ball wants to head towards the four, and who knows if something will happen there. I mean, I would not try to play a position. I would simply roll this in softly. Well, you know, that, that's probably what a lot of people would like to do, but uh, yeah, it worked out great. Because the threes, you know, when you just, yeah. just don't miss. That's the big of thing. Course. And especially when you go with velocity jacked up and then going to collide into a ball. The four is on the top rail there, so if you know if he could just make the two on the side and hit the ball real soft, and just get himself some kind of a shot at the three, mm -hmm. he won't have too much trouble getting the four. I don't believe. But if he tries to, you know, he's jacked up over that the uh, was that the seven ball. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if he tries to get funny, he's liable to get something in the way when he goes after the three. I'm just going to hit this ball. No, he's going to try and move it. I hope he doesn't get bad luck. Well, he hit it great. He came through everything cleanly. Ended up with the same angle that you were suggesting he should play for softly yeah, yeah, anyway. So yeah. Didn't make a whole lot of progress there. No, he, could, he could just make this ball soft. Shoot this ball soft. Softly. Come out for the combination. Sure. Or well, he could try to go into the ball if he hits it at the right speed. I don't know if, if that's... Yeah, he just hit it soft. I think that's the best bet rather than trying to go into them because a lot of things can get funny when you do that. Yeah, if he hits this ball with a light stop on a cue ball, that ball shouldn't be going forward very far. No, should not get away from him. He actually hit it with pretty good pace and it didn't go very yeah. far. And that was the problem. You got to be able to see the five ball, and you have the other ball in the way. Yeah, at the five goes. I think he's just going to follow out near the center of the table. Uh, I would, I would come back. Oh, he did it. Well, I wouldn't have done it, but he did it probably better than I would have done it. He missed the ball. I think he was. I think he was trying to cheat it. Well, I saw huh. when he was lining it up. He was lining it up wrong. You know, if you can, I would love to see that one again, Mark. Yeah, that was because a very. I could see he was lining shot. that one up. I wonder if everybody could see that. You know what? It makes me feel like the eight was slightly impeding the pocket then. Uh, yeah. Or else it was just. I don't know what. It, he, he, very. It's very hard to speculate what happened there because we don't have the same angle. Well, I I was watching it beforehand. I said, if he doesn't change this, he's going to miss it. To myself, I'm saying. And he just went right into the rail with it. Uh, Lee Van did not get an effective spin on there. He did get it back some. Now he's going to have to be a little bit of a shot maker. We're going to get a second look at the... Uh, yeah, uh, that ball. There it is. Yeah, this isn't... Uh, yeah. See, okay. See, yeah, see, he, he, just, he just hit it dead straight. I think, th I think that shot, that maybe the eight was slightly blocking, hitting the heart of the pocket. But... He missed it the other way. No, the the eight had it on the edge, so he was no. 
No, okay. the, for him to hit the pocket, the cue ball would have went that way. So he stopped the cue ball dead. Okay, okay. And he missed it to that rail. So if he would, if he, if he would have cut it a little bit, the cue would have gone towards the rail more, or away from the eight. Well, anyway, Lee Van uh, answered with a miss of his own, and now uh, Mika comes back to the table with the score tied. Thin cut on the six. This is very thin. This is very thin. He made it. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, this, he's, he's, this is right where Mika sometimes comes unraveled in these matches. So I'm going to tell you, Mika plays much better from in front like most people do. But sometimes he gets very frustrated, very emotional. And if things don't go his way, sometimes he compounds that and uh, he can get into the death spiral. That's what I was talking about in the last rack. I was saying he let, he let him get up on him a little bit. Yeah. And maybe... He uh, is not going to like it from there for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of mistakes in this in this particular rack here. Blood pressure sky high. We should have blood pressure meters on these players. So, <laughs> <laughs> be interesting. <laughs> a winning blood pressure and a win and a losing blood pressure. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, I I know a guy in a world's tournament used to take his pulse. He would just sit there and he would count his, uh, his, his, his heartbeat and he'd take his pulse and he would try to, you know, keep them down to a certain, control them, you know? Yeah. Well, Lee Van uh, takes advantage. I think we all know who I'm talking about, but I, I, <laughs> maybe I'm not supposed to mention his name. Well, you know, uh, Pat. yeah, Pat Fleming, uh, <laughs> m military snipers, they shoot in between heartbeats and I in between breaths. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's Breast how they get that sense, I don't yeah. know how you do it with the heartbeats. You got to be pretty in tune with your body, and if you're amped up because you're nervous, you have to have done it a lot to be able to do that. And there's a there's such a thing called the respiratory pause. So when you breathe in and breathe out, it's not static. It's not in, out, exhale. But after you exhale, there's a little moment there where there's your blood doesn't need any oxygen, and so that's called the respiratory pause. And that's where they found that you get the most accurate shooting. Your chest is not heaving in and out as we look on as is that also leave apply in. to pool or you don't know? Of course. I mean, don't you think when you draw the cue back? I, well, I asked it because I believe you, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. And these guys, while they may not overtly plan to uh, gauge their breath, they've played so much pool that they just instinctively have learned when they make the most accurate shots. So, uh, yeah, it was a very interesting uh, study. It certainly is. And now, now Mika has opted to take a break, and I certainly agree with his decision because he knows he's on the... Yeah, he's on tilt. Absolutely, he's on yeah. tilt. That's what they call it, and the poker players call that. They're on guys on tilt. He starts making bad decisions. So we will we'll be right back in just a minute with more of the action here. Very short break by Mika. Comes back to the table, looking at a push out or possible kick. He has his brow furled. I'm sure that doesn't mean he's happy about it. Yeah. What do you think he's going to do here? I don't think he's going to kick. I think he's going to push out. But the 310 is a is a problem. So you hate to kick well, you know, and sell it, out. If he can hit the, the rail, the bottom or the short rail, and then come up and hit that one ball, there could be a, a, a nice safe kick there. But uh, I don't know if he can do that without spinning the cue ball. And if he spins the cue ball, he, he's liable to, head, I don't know, maybe even head into the pocket. I can't tell. Yeah, Bill's. Talking about it like a kick or hit and stick or something. Yeah, uh, off the end hit yeah. stick. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe even hit and, and stick and, and hit it at the, a certain angle that you could run into the long rail mm -hmm. and come back behind the eight ish. Yeah. Or the eight, uh, four. Now that 310 is definitely so a bother just, to him. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to take that out of there. Uh oh. Oh, no. This could be this gruesome. This is really bad. This is really bad. It, he just it, wanted to push it, it and leave it long. <laughs> Yeah, anything but that. Now the eight, is that on the spot, the eight? The ten. Or, or, well, uh, ten's going to get spotted, but if the eight, is that going to block the, you know, is the ten going to block the eight? I can't see. Oh, oh. up the other end, I'm sorry. I was okay. thinking it was going to no, get okay, spotted. Okay. Ten. I see, yeah. We got the one, two, 
three, four. Well, this looks like a nice out here, too. This is a good, mm-hmm. chance, good chance to run out here. These are just the kind of outs that rotation players uh, are very good at managing. He's going to probably shoot the, the two into the same, in the side, the same pocket, same side of the table as the one. I think he's going to just float this ball real soft. Or, or can he draw it? And draw this without getting the four in a way? Uh, uh, looks like he's going forward. Yeah, he's just going to float. Oh, he's going to go forwards. Three cushions. Yeah. Now he can stop top spin out. Two cushions. Right, and he'll shoot the four on the side to the same side of the table. The three goes in. If he gets straight enough, he'll, he'll shoot the five. He'll have no problem with the five. In fact, uh, if he gets straight on the four now, it's going to be uh, curtains for Mika, this rack. He has a problem reaching the shot. He's really stretching far. He might have to get the bridge out. He's trying to shoot behind his rack back. Play it in the corner. I like that better. Rather than move the cue ball, he secured a good angle here to yeah. get to the five. Well, yeah, he, he has to move out for the six anyway, so he doesn't mind a little bit of an angle. Good decision. Yeah, he slammed that ball, so he was probably almost straight on it. So he wanted to move the cue ball a little bit extra, so he hit it really hard. He was close enough. He felt like he'd be plenty accurate. Muscled at home. Yeah. Picked up a few inches. The, his he advantage. might have got himself too straight here. Uh, or over the nine. I'm not sure which is worse. He's going to probably have to follow the cue ball. And probably use some left English. Yeah. To get enough speed on this thing. That naturally hampers accuracy a little bit. But he's relatively close. Let's see. Yeah, left English is... A, yeah, it's high left. I don't think he'll try to get up by the side pocket. Well, gonna he's going to go right towards the ball, and I'm concerned with, yeah, I say he's going right towards the ball. I'm concerned with him making sure he has a shot or not, but he has a shot. Pretty difficult shot, though. Is it frozen? Not quite. Then it's better off if it's not frozen, I think. And the eight ball, the eight ball is near, the, near where he is, so that's good, too. He missed. Just what M Mika needed. Yeah. He needed a little uh He did. Uh, he has to get out here, otherwise he's gonna be really not happy. He wants to get his head clear. He needs to get a, a win mm -hmm. under his belt and uh pocket some balls. If he runs out of the, the, the shot clock, runs out of time, it automatically, it automatically clicks over. Yeah, goes to an extension, correct? And you get one correct. Yeah, one correct. One correct. Good point too, because he's going to wind it right down. Well, he's okay. I don't think he would love to put it there, but he's okay. He has to make this ball. He's going to shoot it in the corner, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I think down in the corner sounds right. Pretty much hold it there if he could. Good chat. Pretty much stick there, too. And this is just what he needed. Just mm -hmm. what he needed to get his arm loosened up again. And yeah, this would tie it up. He'd have the break. Yeah, it's getting late. Okay, him and then capitalizes on a Cortez air, ties the match, six games apiece. Well, I guess I got to share with you, Bill, a little poker story. You'll get a kick out of this. <laughs> Pat Fleming was going to play some poker. We were in Las Vegas. Really? I was encouraging him to do so. He was excited. He went to a, one of the bigger clubs. I think at the Mirage was the state of the art. Maybe it was the Bellagio. What kind of poker? Uh, I think Pat was going to play maybe 3-6 limit or 1-2 limit or uh, no limit. 3-6 is a good, good way to start, to learn. Anyway. 
You know, uh, Pat was coming in on the big blind, and there was a seat open, and the dealer was just getting ready to pitch the cards out, and the little blind and the big blind was set, and Pat was coming in the middle of them. And the dealer looked up and said, Sir, would you like to take the big blind? And Pat was nervous and excited, and so he reached down and took the man's $3, <laughs> thinking that they'd invited him to do that. <laughs> so, anyway, a uh, bunch of swell guys at that poker game. Uh, so, so Mika has broke... Did he make anything? Three, six, nine. No, nothing dry yet again. And so we always kind of re remember that. How did the guys day. take it at the table? Everybody laughed. They, oh. <laughs> I mean, the dealer had, you know, there's a bunch of hard guys there. So sure. they'd never seen anything like and it. The funny part is that his brother's a very good poker player. No, I know Pete. Pete. Yeah. Well, he's good. I've played with Pete a bunch of times already. We get, this is a private game we go to. Mm -hmm. He got a little bit of a bad break there. He hit the ball nice, nicely, and uh, he would have been left longer and without a, a chance to hit the ball directly. And now he can hit the ball, at least on the, on the thin side. He might can make a successful uh, safety here. Yeah, it looked like Mika was measuring up to get the cue ball behind the three here. A couple cushions, three cushions. Mm. Great shot. Yeah, he should be right on a three ball, I think. Oh, he's going to get a lucky break there. He got a window. Yeah, clearly bad luck because Mika kind of flipped his hand. Highly displeased. He made a great yeah. effort here to get safe. but it Well, it would have been very nice to get the, uh, one, the 110 ball at hand. I would have, wouldn't mind that too much. I don't think he's going to play the 10 here, is he? You think so? Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, in the old days, they would always say, you know, you don't go for the money unless it's for sure. Mm -hmm. You go for the run out. But uh, I think things are changing on this table because th the percentages would be different. And uh, there's always the option of a backdoor safety. You might sure. get lucky. Sure. You might, you know, so, and plus there was not an easy safety there. He was going to really have to work hard to try to find a safety that was going to be iffy. So you figured oh, yeah. he might as well if you can play iffy shot. Might as well make sure you win with it. You like our chairs in here? Oh, they're wonderful. Very comfortable. I remember when I was imprisoned in Vietnam, we had to sit here like this. <laughs> I think he was playing for the two billiard on the 10 here. But see the 10's off the rail, that yeah. perfect amount, like maybe a half an inch or something. You are absolutely and right. If you come close, you get a target twice as wide. He came over a little too far, and now he's going to have to really... Uh, draw it a lot to do that. Uh, he didn't do it as well as he would have hoped to, but he's he's a safety boy. It was a great safe. You know, he was a little unfortunate because he hit the rail and the ball at the same time. If he hits yeah. either one, if he hits the ball first or the rail first, yeah. he makes it there. So. It, that's why I said it was at that perfect distance from the rail. Usually, if you make a hit as good as he did, that ball goes in. I mean, Absolutely. there's no doubt about it. I can't believe it didn't go. You want to know yep. the truth? Very hard luck to hit it that well and not get it. And he's been having a little hard luck. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, and he, probably that's what gives him the attitude. You can see he has this uh, kind of negative uh, body language, always. negative attitude he's always. got. I, he I, always has that? I didn't know that. I, I describe him as insolent. Really? Yeah. Oh, what a, a nice, solid contact. That's a nice kick, but... Uh, yeah, nice kick. Uh, you got a chance to do a couple of things here. You can cut the two in, and maybe if you hit the rail, it'll go off the four. Or you could just try to draw and draw the cue ball into the 10 9, maybe, and leave, mm -hmm. leave them kind of safe over there. I mean, there's other safes too. You can you can bank the, ten, the, the two down the center of the table and maybe get the cue ball behind the. Uh, what's that? The one ball. Uh, the, Six or seven. He's make the ball. What a he shot. made it clean without what hitting that ball. What a shot. And that, that was the, he didn't expect that to happen. He would have had the three clean. Right. Now, and now he's got to worry about the four ball there. He thought it was going to go on off the four. And that would have been better. For Mika, anyway. Yeah. He's, that's another Great bit shot. of bad luck. He's getting really bad luck. A, a succession of it. Make a combination. 
You had another good chat. And I hope this. You know, <laughs> oh boy, he can hit it. He might be able to make it. Okay, I was gonna say he might be able to make. It. He can hit the ball for sure, and I might be able to make it. I'm not sure if he can make this. It's very close. Looks like he can make if it. If he can't make it, he'll kick it out of there. Yeah. Yeah, if he couldn't have made that, he would have definitely let us know with his body language. <laughs> His, his arm is coming down close to those balls. He overhit this a little bit. Yes, he did. He's going to have to make a little harder shot than he really wanted. I mean, he's good enough to cut this in, but, you know, oh, he yeah. didn't want to be there. And he's going to play a three-ball combination, which you seldom see. He's lucky their table gave him a little bit of grace there, a little bit yeah, of... Perfect ball speed, though, you know, I mean... Yeah. He almost missed that ball. That ball was it wasn't quite clean. Ball combination, game winning shot. Nika Eminen now has seven. Lee Van Cortez a six. Well, now he's maybe he's gonna have a little better attitude. Let's see. You know they call him the Ice Man, but I always wondered about that because he's so emotional. You know, so, which well, is it? I know another person that they used to call the uh, maybe it was the Ice Man. I don't remember. Larry Hubbard. Uh, no, what did they call Ray, Ray Martin was some kind of nickname for him, uh, too. Cool Cat. Cool Cat. And, uh, and he, he wasn't so cool. No, and no. Sometimes he would take a little shot of whiskey before his match. I didn't know that. Look at here. Now, Eminem has pocketed 72 balls while Ortiz is only 47. That usually tells the story. But normally, when there's that disparity in the amount of balls, the score is a little bit further apart. Yeah. You know, it's only one game apart. And that so. shows you that he possibly wasn't getting out you know, when he needed to. Right. Yeah, he was running the majority of the balls and not quite getting out. Yeah, I always wonder if you shouldn't get uh, nine ball shouldn't be uh, the guy with the most pocketing, pocketed the most balls. It, uh, you know what? Nine ball is that way. If you play long enough, it's uh, the total balls. And, and Pat kind of uh, taught me that. With his AccuStats, you don't have to look at what the, the totals are. Just look at total balls pocketed, and that will give you the long-term winner. The 10 goes on the break. It does not yeah, count does. as a win, just so you know. It's, it just means you get to continue shooting. And they pocket it immediately, and he gets to continue shooting. Right. Now, if he was be safe on the, the one ball here, would he still be able to push? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's just played as uh, it returns to the table. You can actually get hooked, you know, I mean, sure. if, it's, uh, if you're unfortunate. It's a dangerous shot. It's very hard to, to you, know, you want to stop the ball, but, I mean, you get, you're you almost frozen to the rail. Very hard to stop the ball. You can do it, but your accuracy goes. Well, the seven ball helps your confidence, though, because you can roll this in and use the seven ball to stop it for the three when you cut the two in the side, I mean, or at least slow the cue ball down, I mean. Yeah. Nobody move. That does help to bolster your confidence. He just, he just doesn't like the, making the first shot. No, nobody likes this shot. This is it's it's kind of a, a a win or lose shot right now. You feel like you succeeded on the break, and now you're one forced to play a win or lose shot. Right? Oh my goodness! He, he didn't made even two threaten. Oh, no, no, he, he didn't, didn't even threaten the pocket yeah, with that. Did, that he was didn't. he knew he didn't like it all the way. There was and he shot it like he didn't like it. And you see where the cue ball got to? Yeah. So that that might be, have a, uh, had a part in the reason why he missed it by so much because he tried to get all the way down there. He didn't do what you said, play right. to hit the ball as a stopper. Use yep. that. Use, use the uh, was the seven uh, seven ball as a stopper, six ball. Seven yeah, ball. When, I keep confusing those two balls. Well, adding power to a shot that's already hard just further complicates it. You know, so no surprise when you miss when you do that. You know, I mean, it's yeah, hard enough to sure. just roll it in. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think rather, if you're not going to roll it in, you don't like that, and that's okay. But then don't power up. It's time to play safe right then and there rather than make an unforced error and let your uh, leave end back in there yeah. with an optimum. He may, he may stop. Oh, he's going to go forwards. I don't understand this. but I'm, I, Well, I think he maybe got a little bit funny. I think he wanted to be able to get to the end rail without clipping the eight ball so he could come on the other side and play the four in the same pocket. Oh. Okay, no, he could. Yeah, but okay. I thought he was going to so come back and then cut that ball in and drift back over to the side of the table because it looked like he was afraid of that ball not fitting into the corner, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't think it did fit, you know? It only fits uh, where he's got it now. Right, right. 
even if it does fit, it's only a partial pocket. And here he's now get free and clear. He's, so. he's going to shoot the four real soft. Only hit that one rail, and then he's going to shoot below the for the five boys and a little touch of left on it. Perfect. You know, and, and Darren Appleton one time told me something that is so true and so good. Never be lazy around the table. Work a little harder, you know, and it makes so much on every shot, even on the now, most routine really of balls. It, uh, yeah. some, some games it's more important than others, I think. But you're right. I've noticed these nine ball players uh, when they're playing one pocket. And if they don't know the game real well, mm -hmm. they really have to work hard at it. You know, they're really, really yeah. looking at every possibility, you know, all the way around. Now, is he going to get enough angle? Yeah, he made it by about an inch or two. Nice shot. I heard one guy describe it perfectly. He says, I want to play you some one pocket where your shots aren't numbered for you. <laughs> Meaning you yeah. got to make a decision to then execute. Much like you said, if you're not really familiar, then you're always second guessing everything. Am I doing this right? Is this the right shot? Stuns it down to the end rail. Bounce out. A little bit of angle. Close range. Good shot. Yeah, this is uh, this is over. So it's going to be a tie game. Yep. Right. Yeah. Who's, who's got a better record you think Hill Hill with these two guys? This, uh, I wonder if we keep that stat. No, we don't. We don't keep and that? The, and, no. I'm surprised. We're not Major League Baseball here. It's just me and Pat. I mean, come on, Bill. <laughs> well, he has a lot of statistics, you know, I thought. Yes, he does, yeah. Just by watch, watching them, I would have to say that I think that uh, Lee Van might have a higher Hill Hill success rate, but I, I don't know. Well, that could well, be totally wrong. Our match is now tied at seven games apiece. Yeah, Lee Van is a cool customer for sure. Well, these guys won an awful lot of titles. Back-to-back -back U.S. Opens. He's in the you Billiards know, Hall of Fame. Yeah, 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 you can't I do that say. without winning Hill Hill matches. I know that much. Yeah. No, for sure. But maybe it's just sometimes, you know. Yeah, Mika's got that good early front running speed. He gets out in front, and then, boy, you can't catch him. But in the tighter ones, he's not quite as effective. Yeah, if he gets out in front, he's level beat you, uh, you know, 11 to... Uh, Right. Here's a look at our break performance average here. Not very many on the successful side of the ledger. No. Well, this is 10 ball on a 5 by 10. I don't think I don't think that's a bad stat. Oh, no, no. That was a sub, sub average. We, we had a match here earlier where the guy was 100% all the way to the last rack when he scratched on the break. Really? Yeah. He's going to have a shot at once. Maybe. Yeah, he's got, well, he has a shot. He doesn't have an easy position. Get to the two. Well, not easy, but he, if he can turn, come back and hit that three ball, mm -hmm. you know, if he could come across with a touch of left on that ball, which is, is not, you know, you don't mind doing that. You might, you might get a little help from the three. Real soft, touch of left. We went the other way. Oh, that's even nicer. Look at this shot. That was a yeah. beauty, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He deserves a round of applause. And it's still it's still going to be tough. There's some work to do. He's got a small pocket here. Yeah, but he likes the angle and everything. Oh, he's playing the combination? Or he's playing it clean? No, he's going to play it clean, I'm certain. Okay. You are accurate. He didn't come out quite enough. He's going to be able to make it, but it's really a hard shot. Three, four. Yeah. Just another two inches would have been fantastic, you know. Yeah. And now it's like you said, it's super tough. Well, do you try to ease it in with right-hand English on the yeah, cue you know, check it out? I, that's what I would try to do, you know. I mean, because you, you, you got to almost hit it straight into the rail. You might end up shooting the four into the other corner by accident. But he's going with the other side of the cue wall. Around the horn. It's going to be a great shot. It was wonderful. 
Oh, they're so accurate, my gosh. Gonna fall down there. to the bottom and bounce up. Looks like it follow up right where he's at now. He's going to be a little short on the pace. Looks like quite a bit. Just a little thinner than he really wanted. Another six inches once again would have been great. Have to fan that in. I think my life. I think it's going to be three cushion position here. Side rail, side rail, side rail, and optimum result. That's great. We should be have no problem from here. Yeah. It'll just stick right there, maybe. I pulled it back. See, from here, I'm not sure with the angle he could mm -hmm. pull that or not. Yeah. Uh, he just wants to check the cue ball over by the long rail right near the side pocket, bounce away, kind of coming. A little bit of right hand spin right into his position zone on the nine. He's going to bounce off the rail, I think. Sure. He came out perfect. This should be uh, all over but the shouting. Well, very entertaining match as Lee Van surges in front now, eight to seven. That's the. Uh, I think Mika's is not. Uh, how does uh, Lee Van, you think, uh, hold up? I would have lead. Great. Because he looks, well, looks like he was I'm just saying, both ways, baby. You know, he's a cool customer. He stays in action in the Philippines, and so he. Gunfights every day, win or lose. Plays great I saw players. a beautiful picture online at the Philippines uh, uh -huh. in the pool room. And they had everything but chickens in the pool room. I mean, it was amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Open air and <laughs> yeah. bare bulbs. and It was just great. Yeah. And they had, I don't know how many people, was almost right on top, almost hanging off the table, you know, while the guys were playing on it. Oh, absolutely. They surround the table and smoke and talk yeah. and ask you questions. Yeah. They're enthusiastic pool fans. Takes a little getting used to. We're so used to being real pristine. Yeah, I wish I was there. That looked like it was a lot of fun. Boy, he hit him good and square there. Is he going to be receiving a ball? Yes, he is. This. And he's going to get position. He has a one. He has a one ball? Yep. Um, Got some work to get on the three here, but. Well, yeah, but. So he's a better I opportunity would, than generally. have this. Have you ever been to the Philippines? No, I no. haven't. You? Yeah, a number of times. It is pool heaven. Business or? Uh, pool. Yeah. All pool. How are you going to get on a three ball here? That's what I'm saying. He's, <laughs> he's got a and, shot. Just come up and maybe position. hit the eight, you think? Super tough. Come up and maybe hit the eight. You can't go no, for I the combination. No. no, I think he's going to go past it. Yeah. Tried to do too much. He tried to create yeah, an angle just, that wasn't there. Yeah, he's trying to come in right he, in. He got perfect on a shot, too, see? Yeah, you had to miss the ball to get here, though, was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so. that's often the case. <laughs> yeah. Very often the case. You have to miss the ball. You got perfect position, but you missed the ball. Mika's looking to see if that whistles into the corner past the eight. Rather that, do would, that, that would be play. a big edge if he could do that, and he's trying to do that too. Soft speed. Oh, great shot! Great shot. He needed every bit of that pocket, mm -hmm. and then some. Yeah. Good ball speed there. Pocket willing to accept that. Had it been twice that speed, there's no chance in the world that falls. And if he gets the right angle, he's gonna be able to come uh, play to four and come off the rail and. Go right at the the uh, green ball, and use that as a stopper to have the position on the five. No, he didn't do that. No, he's going to drag up between the seven and the long rail. I think get on it that way. Yeah, he's or he shoot could, it in the other pocket. Maybe. The he might shoot it in the other pocket too. He's going to hug the rail coming down. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine. Oh, he's got a draw between the eight and nine, 
and not hit it hard enough to go into the side pocket. I just hit the 13 ball. Oh, he didn't do that. Pretty smooth operation here so far. Let's follow up for the sides. A little too far, maybe. Not much. Yeah, he's perfect. Wow. Yeah. You just stop it there and play the eight and the nine in the same pocket. The eight he's, and the nine in the same pocket. Yeah, if you stop it there and then you just slide the key wall off the nine. And the ten. Nine and ten, yeah. I'm sorry. If you stopped it there and played the eight and nine in the same pocket, I'd be, he'd have to bank the nine. <laughs> and that's what I do because it really intimidates your opponent. <laughs> you show that much uh, confidence. I don't think Mika's ever missed a bank shot in this match. If he's four for four. Well, he looks like he's a little looser now. I don't know why. Maybe he needed to get behind to, to get loose. Eight to eight is our score now as Mika Eminem collects that 10 ball. We're going to 11, yes? Yep, race to 11. So it's a race to three from here. A race to three. Single elimination. This is $4,000 or nothing. And a chance for the full 16. How many people are in this? 16. $16,000 entry fee. 16000 added. 16000 in entry fees. 32000 total purse. 16000 in the winner. 8000 second place. Four and four, third and fourth. To me, this is one of my favorite events. I always say it's my very favorite. It's a long match. It's a real test. It's single elimination. It's the real deal. That's real money, too. You know, the guys, can, if they can get involved in this and win this, they can make some real money. They need to make real money in this game. You know, too many times, there's not enough money involved. Yep. We know that. One ball went to the side. Mika has a shot on the two. No, one ball did not go in the side. <laughs> Make your pardon. No, nothing <laughs> I have a little post here. <laughs> Looking at it. There's the one when I move my head. Still on the table. He's, he's got a makeable bank cross corner. And uh, he's going to send the cue ball up maybe towards the two ball. I don't know if you're going to get around that five, but. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It rattles home, drops in, nice ball speed, good shot. Yeah. Mika shakes his head no, that that was... Uh, Is that right? Yeah, it wasn't quite right. But meanwhile, last rack, remember when Mika rattled one home, everything's good? Yeah. Clear the eight. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. It's always good for me. It's, it's, it's a good shot when I make it. It's a lucky shot when my opponent makes it. Yeah, this was a nice shot. That's pretty clean. Oh, yeah. Three... Don't just go forwards a little bit into the rail, maybe. It's been a very entertaining match, you know, Bill. Yeah. It really has. Yeah. He's going to go to the rail, I think, here. Or maybe he doesn't have to. But he's going to shoot the four on the side afterwards, this side. He didn't have to. He just almost went to the rail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do the same thing here. Just hit it. With a little bit of a you know roll. Play the four on the side and the five up the corner. And hopefully he's gonna have to maybe he's gonna hold back on a shot. No, he went forward. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't get too much angle here. He's almost straight in. Yeah, he doesn't have to do anything special here. He just stop it. Well, I think he's going to come back a little bit. Oh, good call. Well executed. Get a little closer. Same shot here. He wants to cheat the pocket on the... So he doesn't want to touch the 10 ball. Nice. Hit a little hard, actually. Mm. 
Yes. Yeah, so you go a little draw and then a little bit of left English on here. This is this is funny now because if he yeah. cuts this in the side, he's going to be heading towards that nine ball. That's what I mean. A little bit of draw to clear those two balls and then come on one side and come back out on the other side you attacking think towards. So? You would do that with a reverse draw. That's yeah. an unusual shot to try. You hit it good. Wow. Yeah. Deserves a round of applause. Very whether, nice. whether he gets it or not is another thing, but that was a great shot. Got himself back in the line and fairly close. I can close. tell you could play pool. Me? Oh, yeah. I talk a lot about pool. I like that shot you just called there. Uh-oh. Oh, a little wide. <laughs> Leave him flinched a little on that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll be all right. Yeah, he's, no. He's, he's, uh, his position is close enough he could just go to the bottom rail and bounce back up. Same pocket, maybe both balls. Right. Now, this is a big run out to make here at this late juncture in the oh, match. It is. Yeah. And uh, a pleasure to watch. That was well executed. Lee Van Cortez a nine. Mika Emmett an eight. Nine, eight, going to 11. This is a big rack for Mika. He better win this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're all big. Right in here. I mean, if, if uh, he doesn't win this rack, then he's on the hill. Right? And forced to win three in a row. Sitting right behind Mika is Rodney Morris, the Rocket. He was earlier on eliminated in this event. Who'll be Rodney? I broadcast it too. Let's see who did. Made a ball. He made a ball. He's, he's on the froze at the top of rail. And, uh, you know, even if he can make the one ball, I don't, I don't see where he's going to pocket the two. He might be able to pocket the nine. You know, maybe the two goes past the five. I don't know. You know, uh, sometimes the cross corner bank on the one here, yeah. because you got quite a bit of clutter. Sure. You know, kind of a you'd know this shot, the one pocket style thing, and try to use the two and the nine. And I don't like it in that case. I just don't like it in that case. The cubo was frozen. The rail was hard to hit. Okay. Well, how did he come out here? I guess okay, right? Sure. It's fine. Not bad. Not half bad. So, even though he didn't mean to collide into that object ball in the middle, he did good with the one ball. The effort would go for the nine, the ten ball here. He was he would kick over to this long rail and come from behind the one and try to hit the uh, ten ball. But I believe Mika's going to hit the short rail and kick the one back up table and try to hold the cue ball down there. Nothing easy about any of this stuff. No. Looks like the kick and stick or hit and stick. Yeah. Well done. No, well, well done. Now, this is where the, this tactical side, this is where Lee Van probably is going to shine, I would think. so, sure. Yeah, I, I really do. And I think he might try this. Two cushions, play the one back down to his side and just stun the cue ball forward down behind the two. He'd like to roll it, but I'm not sure you can roll it on the four here. Now, the two cushion shot, stun it down behind the two. Well done. Once again... Deserves a little applause, but he gets none. Yeah, he's got that one ball heading for the 10, so he likes that. Mika's looking at the kick to possibly sink the 10. Uh, it may be possible, but it, it, it yeah. not at a slow speed, that's for sure. Well, it's not laying ideal for that. This yeah. isn't really the place. Yeah. The, your previous time that you called it, that was a better shot for him this time. This has a possibility, but you'd have to really hit it hard. Warp drive, yeah, and that means that the one ball's coming back. It looks back. like he's going to hit it hard. I think he's going to do that. He, he made an error in judgment there. Okay. <laughs> Mika flips his hand as if to say, why me? It always happens to me. I have to not only beat the rolls, but I have to beat the other guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, he could have did something different. Yeah, it looks like Rodney is in uh, Johnny Archer down there. Maybe they're going to coach it. Mika. <laughs> they want to get one of these guys out. I don't know who they're rooting for. 
Tough layout. Nice shot there. Yeah. The two I goes by the eight. Goes. I don't know if it does. It looks, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he played for something. I think it might have been going for the side. He's not sure himself. Yeah, he's sure. He's sure. He's going for it. Mm, well, he had a hit. lot of room there. He had a lot of room. See, so he had center pocket on it. Yeah, good hit, too. Powered up to get the cue ball free and clear where he can get his bridge hand down and have the right angle to play this combination from. Rotation players in the Philippines get on the right side. If you're on the other side, the combination and uh, quality of holding the secondary object ball is much more difficult. Good job there. Well, I like him here. I think he's out. Yeah. It's like Amico's going to have to win three in a row. Yeah, this kid seems pretty serious about this match, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, this is like laying, the balls are laying real nice for him. Wouldn't have minded going on another foot, though. Now you're going to have to travel the cue ball. I think he'll bump the nine here now that I look at it. Well, he might. I think that because that way he can play this with just a little bit of draw and figures to land heavy on the nine, hold it for the seven ball. He might not have to. He might be able to roll this and cheat the pocket and just... You know, hit it real soft. I'm not sure. I can't tell. I, the reason to play the nine is if you roll it, you might get over the nine or have the yeah, keep on. that's true. That's the only reason. That's true. Okay, good. Heavy on the nine. They did that perfect. Yeah, yeah. They did that perfect. Once it releases from the side cushion, that's perfect. I shouldn't say perfect, but it is proper. Oftentimes, perfect position and proper position are two different things. Sure. I'm just going to cut this ball in. I probably with hardly any English should all just come straight down for the nine in the corner. I think two cushions. Really? Okay. Yeah, that way, because that way your ball speed is pretty. You, you're you're not going to have to worry about being on the rail. And you got a pretty liberal margin of error ball speed, guys. We got Whitey. Oh, he's golden. This would put him on 10 games. Very hard fought contest thus far. Sure. Lee Van Cortez a 10, him and an 8. I'm really enjoying this match. I'm not pulling for anyone. I'm just saying it's been a very interesting yeah, match pulling, to I'm commentate. Pulling, I'm pulling. I'm, I want the home team. Okay. Who's the home team? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you got Finland versus the Philippines yeah, I here. Thought, yeah, I was thinking Mika lives in New York now, doesn't he? Well, uh, yeah, I suppose. Okay. That was just a save. I just uh, I dropped the ball. I was trying to make a save. I see. He, but I, he, I, I, it's a success, successful save because he does live in New York. Mm -hmm. I believe. But he does play for Team Europe. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> I was just trying to All right, we'll get out from that. under the okay. gun there. Well, he's, yeah, either way. I always pull for a great match. With the exception of when my man Efren Reyes plays, I just, I can't help myself. He's Hard to be he's unbiased. He is. A friend of mine helped me a lot in life. Did he really? Yeah, my pool game, yeah. Very generous. Leave is, is he really? Mm -hmm. Can you speak uh, his Tadalo? language? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, no. He speaks the language of pool. What's the name of Tadalo? Tagalo. I thought there was another word, another Bade. language. Is there another language that they speak? There probably is. There's probably different dialects, but th that's the primary one in the uh, from Manila. Wow. Angeles City. Well, yeah, he didn't have much here. You gotta be careful he doesn't do something harmful. Plays a bank. Five yeah, for five on I his bank. Make the bank. <laughs> five for five, that's all in the ten ball match on the ten foot table. He's a little bit over this eight ball. Nice. He knows his cue ball's coming close to the ten, but I don't know if the ten can even fit. Mm. No, I think the only way you have to Ram it over there and blast it so it goes into the rail off the back of the seven. 
I think you want to play it that way. The height of reckless. Huh. What a pure oh, shot nice. that was. That's nice. He might have played that. Yeah, what a pure shot. That was maybe a two-way shot. That was a shot. big shot because now he's got shape for the four. Easy, easy shape for the four, five, six. Good shot. <laughs> that really changed the complexion of the whole rack, that one shot, didn't it? Yeah, he's out this rack. He's yeah. out. I hope so because it makes it far more yeah, interesting. Yeah, sure. Like to have just a little angle on the eight. That's all. You'll take a look at that. Not worried about pocketing the six. Just wants to make sure he wants the cue ball. Well, he'll come back a little oh, bit. He's laying on the nine. go to the reel. Very close laying yeah, he's on gonna the use nine the reel. there. Okay, good. Just cut it and come back across the table. Very nice. Follow this out, bro. I'm going to go bottom two. It doesn't matter. Left himself a little longer, but it's almost straight. Now his game is built on straight shooting. And he closes out this nice. rack. Balls within one. Nika Eminen, nine. Lee Van Cortez, a ten. You want, you're rooting for a Hill Hill match, are you? Yeah, I just like, yeah, however I, I it goes. Like, I like them. I like the Hill Hill matches. Yeah, sure. They're, they're a little more exciting. Why not? He's, he's racking the balls, and he's, he's uh, being very careful about every little ball here. I don't blame him. It's this last... Last stand. In other words, he doesn't have to worry about the other guy racking for himself anymore. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, so he could be more particular. You know, it's not going to come back at him. Oh. Yeah, I you don't know. You what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I certainly do. He's particular irrespectively, though. Yeah. Kind of a perfectionist, I would say. Yeah. Really needs to generate some offense. It's been kind of dead here. I think he did break a run out one rack, though. Well, the cue ball came Can back this race. way. Oh, he made that. Oh, doesn't count, though. The three went in, though. Where's the two? He's got a shot out of one. Oh, great. Look at this. Well. I think I got a feeling we're going to see a hill hill rack here. You wish for it, and we provide. You know, we try to answer those. I got a feeling. There we go. Yeah, stop, Three's, stop. The three. It's a four. nice layout. Yeah, he should have no. Uh... I don't know if I would have left myself that long. Is he shooting the right ball here? Yeah, poor ball. Four, five, six. I thought this ball was a three over here. Oh, that's the five ball. My eyes are getting a little watery. I'm starting to see the colors off. You see any big problems here? Well, I mean, this would probably be the only one. I mean, getting on the he's seven. A, he's going to go for what, the side here? Or he's going to come over for the corner? I cannot tell. Side. Oh, corner. corner. Long corner. Okay. The eight, does that go past the ten? I think so. Doesn't have to. He's going for the side. Look at this. Is that shot you showed me before? You want to? No, I don't think that plays here. Mm. Good. Went right around it. Yeah. Left himself nice and long though. But he can get his hand down on the table. Like I said before, Mika's game is built on straight shooting, so. Rather than try to be cute, he'd rather have a good shot. Did 
shouldn't be a problem. I think he should make this ball. This would be a great break and run out to put himself on the hill here. Yes, it would be. And that's wow, just what nice. we have. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. No hill. <laughs> and Mika's breaking. And both players are good and loose from playing the whole match. Uh, and look at those uh, stats. They've really come up. 846 for Cortez, 837, imminent. And that would suggest that this is going to be a 10 to 10 match. That's a that's a pretty nice stat for a for a five by ten, I think. Yeah, right, eight fifty. Anything around eight fifty, you're playing real good. Nine hundred on nine foot tables, fifty points less on a ten foot table is about what it's been. About so. a hand for two great players. Hey, round of applause here, ten ten. Four thousand dollars on this rack. <laughs> Which is not all the money in the world. We talk about like it's big money. Any other sport, that would be just what you get as a consolation prize. But, but we're happy about that in pool. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. The next uh, five minutes is worth $4,000 to one of them. Yeah. Takes a lifetime to get it, though. Yeah. So make sure that rack's tight, boy. Just the way you want it. What do you think of those new racks they have? They're going to be a tournament they advertise that I saw a flyer on one of the tables. Uh, you rack your own, but it's one of those magic racks. Mm hmm. I don't know. The only thing is, it kind of gums up once in a while a ball roll on it. I, I kind of like the idea of it that it's uniform. Yeah, it, they, they have something along the, that line needs to be done, but I don't know what. That's maybe it or maybe not, but. Nope. Did he make one? He hit him very square. Here comes the one ball. Oh. Hit, uh oh. Yep. Good. Now we got some play. No, for one, sure. ball, one ball is in the worst possible location to be pocketed. That doesn't bite cross side, does it? No, I don't even think he can get to it. I think the seven ball's partially so blocking. I can't, tell, yeah. I can't tell if he can do that or not. Yeah, I don't think. Well, I mean, I don't think he'd want to play it cross side anyway. you have to push somewhere. What do you do? He was talking to Jay about something, and Jay pointed something out. I don't know what he was talking to him about. I think they were talking about whether the ball was frozen, maybe, if he was rolling up on it. I don't know. Hard to tell from our monitor here if it's frozen. Jay didn't go look at it, so apparently it's not. Push out. Yeah, that'll have an effect on where he pushes to it also, you know. Mm-hmm. Apparently not. No, it looks to me like it is, but I, I don't know what they're saying. It looked awful close. If it wasn't frozen, it was yeah. the second best thing. Yeah, you'd think it would be close enough that it would warrant the referee to come out and look. Well, he's passed it back. <laughs> I'm not sure what Lee Van has in mind. You know he has to have a plan. I guess it's rail first before the side pocket. No, he's going ball first. Okay, he's going to bank it. Let's Maybe like backs that. cross corner. One rail. Let's play in the safe. That was probably the... I was going to say it was a wiser choice, but maybe not after seeing the leave. This ball uh, cuts in the side. They may use a little bit of left English to come out and miss the three. Well, that's a nice safety there, too. There's a nice safety there, too. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe because it's so hilly, he went, this, went for the safe. Well, that cue ball is going to be plenty hot if he cut it in the side. I don't know if he felt like he oh, was yeah. comfortable to yeah. control it. Maybe he needed to come back down for the deuce. Recushion kick. Well, here well, we go. This tough, tough bank here. No, well, yeah. You, in uh, fact, you don't need to. Uh, no. You don't need to play this cross side. You could, you play this into a safe. Safety exchanges. You, you graze the one. You send the cue ball up behind the rail in the five there, and you allow to get behind him three balls and put the one ball behind the four. Maybe I don't know something like that. No, he 
can see that. Mm, very nice shot. I don't, I don't know. Is yeah, it nice? No, nice attempt. No, I, it clearly didn't work out. But He might be able to not hit that one. I don't know. I can't tell. He's no, so I think he can. It. I think he's got the shot on the 1-8. Not saying it's an easy shot. But it is going to be a very important shot. He did not see the safe that I saw. Oh, what a big shot that was. Well, this is not all that easy. He's got work to do here because he's got to come down for right. the two, and then the three's a little funny. Uh, there's not a lot of room for that three. I just meant that if he misses that, he's uh, maybe giving up the entire game. He, yeah. he might not win with it, but he could yeah. have lost. You know, so. For sure. And he does have a chance to win with it. And upon where he gets on the two, to possibly. Well, I don't think he's going to draw it straight back. I think he's going to slam it straight down the rail. I say slam, but they don't have to do that yet. That's, I was going to say they don't have to do that anymore because the cloth is so fast. And that's what I meant by slam, but like to force it, you know? Yeah. Got a little straight here. He may have to go a little bit high and a little bit left and just attack about, the nine ball or get on the other side of the nine I ball. I want to go to the left of the nine ball. I want to hit this the short rail, over, uh, the long rail to the left of the side pocket. And bounce straight over and miss the scratch and put the cue ball frozen to that rail. Right there. See where he's putting his tip? Yep. Now, is he that good? I don't know. You know, you got a very fast table. you got a, f a five by ten. Yeah. I think he feels like he's got a real good chance to be able to defend himself. I think he he's a little weak. Himself. He might have hooked himself. <laughs> okay. Well, we got action here. I promise you that this three will go close to wherever he's aiming it. He might not make it, but he's going to go close. You know, realistically, coming up short on that one, that really was the criminal event. You'd have been, if you go hard, he must you have almost known can't that. He fail. must have thought about it. He didn't come close. Look at this. Oh, no, he's going to get a brick. You got a lucky brick. Look the ball inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really only luck, though, if you capitalize now. I mean, that, yeah, so far. Well, so far he's lucky. <laughs> yep. yep. It's like getting dealt pocket aces. You know? <laughs> They're wonderful. That's what you wait for and you pray for, but you don't always win with them. Oh, what a nice shot. What a nice position, too. He had to really yeah, get near the that corner. Was, that was maybe a championship shot there. That was really nice. Yeah, no doubt about it. That was a world-class shot. You will not see. Okay, a chance to see. Solid impact. Yeah. It just grazed Tickled the, the ball and went yeah. off the ball. He really didn't hit the ball that well. He doesn't really deserve all this good fortune that's been happening to him on this rack. But I'm sure there's been fortune on both sides. Both yeah, good and right. bad throughout Absolutely the whole match. Absolutely right. Doesn't console Mika very much, but... <clears throat> yeah, he's shaking his head. Uh, well... <laughs> yeah. If he has just a little angle... <laughs> yeah. It looks like he may. He might have to force it a little more than he wanted to. He does not want yeah, to have to go can, up and can, down he can with hit the this nine. firm, right? Yeah. The only thing he could do wrong is hit it too hard, right? Yeah, or try to make an angle that's not there and force it and yeah. miss. I mean, yeah. Just no, don't he's, miss. He's fine, I think. Oh, he is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Rolls it perfectly in. And this 10 ball is all that stands between Lee Van Corteza advancing in the tournament. And there it is. Oh. And there's the dead fish. Yeah, there it was. He shook his hand, and uh, he's just sick about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's heartbreaking to lose a match yeah, like that. That's serious. He actually played very well. Both players, very entertaining match, so. They did. They played good. Yeah. I yeah, really enjoyed working with you, Bill. Oh, it was my pleasure. Mark, really. You did a great job. Thank you this so much. This has been coverage provided by the worldwide leader in billiard program.
programming, AccuStats. Thank you for joining us. So long for just a while.